This is the oldest petrol-electric hybrid automobile in the world. It predates the 1901 Lona Porsche Semper Vivas by five years. The old established Armstrong Manufacturing Company of Bridgeport, Connecticut, USA, built this amazing car in 1896. It was designed by Harry E. Day and constructed by a team of extremely talented engineers. During the build process, they kept on improving the design by adding innovative and sophisticated features until they had finished the incredible machine you see here. And although the first automobile dates back to 1886, very few were actually built. Even 10 years later, in 1896, you would hardly ever see one on the roads, even in large cities, such as here in New York. To explain why it's so special, let's go through the amazing features one by one. First of all, this gasoline or petrol powered car has an electric starter. The first commercially available electric starter motor did not appear until some 15 years later, in 1912, when Cadillac first fitted this device to their cars. Until the electric starter became available, all cars had to be started by hand, by turning a cranking handle. So this feature alone makes the car, and the Armstrong company in particular, something remarkable. The engine is a massive twin-cylinder, six and a half litre unit. The cylinders are horizontally opposed, and all the mechanical parts are exposed to the elements. To help the engine to start, this Armstrong has an electrically powered valve that opens to briefly reduce the pressure in the cylinders. Once the engine starts, the valve is closed, so the engine runs normally. All veteran cars have little taps on the top of every cylinder to allow the driver to crank the engine by hand, ready for starting. To move off, you select first gear by turning the lower wheel on the steering column. That automatically disengages the clutch. As the engine starts to run faster, the dynamo produces more power, which gradually engages the clutch. No clutch pedal is required. The gears are constant mesh, one set made of metal and the other originally made of rawhide for quieter operation. The gear selector moves an inner shaft in or out to allow a key to slot into the desired gear wheel. The moment the driver moves the gear selector to change up to second and third gear, the clutch disengages automatically to allow the next gear to be selected. This is what much later became known as a semi-automatic gearbox and did not become widespread until the 1930s. The car is fitted with a differential mounted on the drive shaft. As soon as the engine starts running, the starter motor becomes a dynamo and charges the battery. If extra power is required, for example when going uphill, the dynamo can be used to give a little extra boost, in much the same way as today's hybrid vehicles work. The car also has regenerative braking. As we have already seen, the Armstrong has a steering wheel at a time when a tiller was the norm. The steering itself follows the Ackermann principle. The steering box is mounted on the central king bolt. A hard rubber cushion on the king bolt, on which the front axle revolves, acts as an early form of shock absorber. The foot pedal operates the transmission brake, as opposed to the then common practice of forcing wooden brake pads onto the tyre. Pressure on the brake pedal activates an electric switch that disengages the clutch. There is also a handbrake to hold the car when at rest. Yet another feature of the Armstrong that is way ahead of its time is the automatic ignition advance and retard. On every single veteran car, this is one of the many settings that has to be controlled by hand. There is a red centrifuge fitted to the end of the crankshaft. As it rotates, it advances and retards the ignition timing automatically with the engine speed. It also acts as a cutout should the engine be over revved. An electric trembler coil powers the spark plugs. The body is that of a typical American-style horse-drawn buggy. In 1896, the standard type of lighting would have been oil lamps and candle lamps. This car had electric lighting. Like so many innovations, the Armstrong needed refinement and further development. 
and that required a lot of money, and sadly, the money ran out. Consequently, the unique car was abandoned and left in a shed behind the Armstrong Company plant. It was rediscovered in 1960 by an employee who preserved it for another 35 years. It then awaited conservation in the McGee collection in the USA until the 2010s. The car was completely restored in 2014 and is in perfect running order. The Lauma Museum is extremely proud to present the sole surviving Armstrong, which was way ahead of its time. 